before 1981, we, uh, you know, we have a long-standing history of military service uh, in the U.S. and abroad. But since there are these beautiful historical photos, um, starting from the early 1900s of six serving in, in you know, every major world war, uh, World Wars One, Two, Korea, um, Vietnam. Uh, we've got pictures of six that are paratroopers, uh, special forces units. Um, you know, we, uh, we've been there, and uh, we, we've shown that we make great soldiers. Uh, 80, 000, more than 80,000 six soldiers died serving alongside Allied forces in World Wars One and Two. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. AR 670-1, uh, the, the Army Uniform Guidelines say that no turbans or beards are allowed. Now, uh, there is also a provision there that allows you to request a religious accommodation or a waiver, and that's what we did, you know. So starting in 2008, we applied for an accommodation for me, and uh, it took nearly two years and a, uh, a mountain of paperwork. The Army provided me with the material, and uh, this ACU material and pattern is actually very hard to get a hold of, uh, as it should be. Um, but it's, it's sort of also thick. Um, it's got some interesting properties, uh, but not really the greatest turban material. You know, and uh, it was, it, it took a lot of experimenting and uh, uh, we played with it uh, to try to find out the, the, the best way to, to put it together. But, uh, uh, you know, it took me a few days to sort of figure it out. Uh, but eventually we came up with this prototype, lack of a better word, and, uh, and, it, and it worked. You know, I, I can tie my turban in a couple of minutes. You know, it's, it's um, usually the amount of time that, that the soldier would take to, to shave or something like that. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, it, it, with my smaller turban, uh, sort of a sports version, if you will, uh, I can easily accommodate both the helmet and the gas mask. Uh, and I get a good seal with the gas mask, too. And the Army didn't just take my word for it. Um, they, they put me in, you know, number of chambers and they gassed me many times and uh, they're like, okay, yeah, you've got a good seal. Uh, and then they, they, you know, subjected Captain Ruthen and Specialist Lamba to the same sort of tests. And, and that's, you know, I think that's entirely appropriate. You know, if, um, if we couldn't wear the helmet or the gas mask, um, you know, uh, and get a good seal, then then you know you don't want to put your unit members at risk, uh, but that's just not the case. We have a huge uh, tradition of of martial arts. Um, as as young children, where we're trained in a, a number of different martial arts, uh, and there's a there is certainly a spiritual connection there as well. Uh, our uh, the last. So there are 10 gurus, or 10 masters in our religion. Uh, Sikhism is, is one of the younger world religions uh, today. Uh, it was founded by Guru Nanak Devji uh, 500 years ago. And so the last six masters um, were very, um, were more martial. And they taught us that you cannot have justice, uh, you cannot have a peace without justice. And so we learned to defend not only ourselves, but we were taught to defend the defenseless. So and if you're going to defend the defenseless, you, you need to know how to do that. Uh, the turban and the unshorn hair are such an integral part of our faith because our, uh, our gurus, or our, you know, the founders of our faith, told us that this is part of our uniform. So, uh, you know, they told us a number of things. Uh, they said, you know, not to drink or smoke. Uh, they told us that men and women are equal. Uh, and they, they told us that uh, to be a member of the religion is not a birthright. It is practice, 
and it is, uh, there is a uniform to it. And so our long unshorn hair and, and beard uh, are part of that uniform as well as the turban. Uh, we wear a bracelet, an iron bracelet, um, called a kara, which is also part of that. Um, a comb, uh, a dagger, uh, or a kirpan, uh, and uh, uh, boxer shorts. And each of these um, pieces of our religious uniform have a, a, a spiritual meaning. You know, so the, the kara uh, symbolizes unity and our connection to, da, to God and to, to, to do good. You know, so when you do good with your hand, you know, you see that you're wearing a kara, it reminds you to continue to do good. Um, with, the, uh, with the boxer shorts, it reminds you to be uh, uh, chaste and control of your carnal desires. Uh, with the comb, it represents cleanliness. Uh, the turban uh, also keeps our hair intact and uh, protects it from the elements. The turbans are an extension of our spiritual selves, uh, as are all of the elements of our uniform. Moving forward, the way I see as preventing another Oak Creek is by integrating with our, our community, our first responder agencies. Uh, you know, when you see a, a fireman save your daughter, you know, pull her, pull her out of a burning building, you're gonna think, wow, uh, this, and, and that fireman is a Sikh. You're gonna say, wow, this, this guy is really a member of my community. Um, you're not gonna harbor any sort of animosity towards them, right? And that's the level of connection um, that we're looking for. That's a level of integration that we really need in order to prevent uh, another tragedy like Oak Creek.